3. Our C is equal to 0 0.06. Divide by our radius of gyration, which is equal to uh, 47.958. times 10 to the power minus 3. And then we have a bracket, secant, and then we have to do uh, pi over 2 square root. Okay, And our P is again 180 times 10 to the power 3 divide by PCR, uh, which is 772.112. So 772. 0.112 times 10 to power 3. Close the bracket. Okay, close another bracket. A big square uh, bracket. Now, before you do your calculation, I have to remind you that this, you have to change your calculator into radians. Okay. Because it's pi over 2. Okay. So you press mode twice, or oh, sorry, on your calculator, you press your mode one, two, three, four, and you press the number two, okay? So from there, I'm going to, uh, now you have to be careful over here. I still remember when I test student on this, uh, a lot of time, they press the calculator wrongly, okay? You do get marks for steps, but, you are just uh, giving away marks if you don't press your calculator properly. So this is 60 times 10 to the power 6. Okay. And then you will have 1 plus. So 64.444 power minus 3 times 0 0.06 divided by 47.958 power minus 3. So it's equal to 80. Boy. I think I got it wrong. Let me try it again. Ah, over here there's a square. That's why I got it wrong. Sorry. 64.444 power minus 3 times by 0 0.06 divided by 47.958 power minus 3 divided by 47.958 power minus 3. So it's go to 1.681. Okay, then I'm going to multiply. So secant is equal to 1 over cos, okay? So shift pi divided by 2 times by square root of uh, bracket 180 power 3 divided by 772.112 power 3. Close bracket, and then I do cosine of my answer, and then 1 divided by my answer is equal to 1. 0.377 uh, You have to get used to so second is equal to 1 over cos. Okay, so the way you press the calculator, so over here you just do cos first, then you do the 1 over. So that's how you get a 1.3667. So this will be equal to 1.681 times by 1.3776 plus by 1 times by 60 power 6. So it's, I get 198.944 times 10 to power 6 Pascal. Okay. So we realize that the note that the maximum stress is less than the stress yield and the stress yield will be equal to so the stress yield is equal to 360 okay so 360 times 10 to power 6 pascal okay so the structure uh, will not 
buckle because the stresses induced is only 198.944 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay. So the next thing we're going to calculate is we're going to calculate uh, y max. Okay. So determine y max. I just have a so, quick question. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, my bad. So I, I just wanted to know how how many marks do we lose for like if we get all the uh, all, all all of them right, but then you do the final so, calculation wrong. So let's say if you get this number wrong, right? And this is worth like uh three marks, you will get a minus one. Okay, so if you yeah. get this number correct, so I don't just look at your final answer. You have to make sure that this number is correct. This number is correct. So one, two, three components is worth three marks. So if this one is wrong, you just minus one mark. Okay. Okay, so you can't, like, let's say you just put the first line in and then you jump all the way to the last line. Yeah, then I don't know where you got wrong. You have to go by steps. Okay, the okay. sequence is important. Okay. Why I write this way, then you can check. If you don't do it this way, how do, how do you know where you got it right or wrong? Okay, so break down your steps as much as you can. Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Okay, don't, don't like, like, don't, don't like, uh, the part I'm going to highlight, don't like, don't write this step, and then you, you give up the answer. If your the answer is wrong, right, then you'll be in trouble, yes or no. Okay, but we will still, Check your numbers like this. We'll still go through your numbers like this, okay? So we have to determine our y max. So if we were to look at our formula for y max, okay, so this is the, uh, why did I do that? So we have to determine our y max. So this is very straightforward now. It's just a matter of plugging in formulas. Okay. Right. So Y max. So E is good to 64.444. Uh, times 10 to the power minus 3. Then you have secant. Then you have square root P. Then you have your Young's modulus. 6.9. Times 10 to the power of minus 6, our i, our uh, l, which is equal, I think our l is equal to, I can't remember now, let me look at our l. I think it's, Four point two. Okay, so four point two divided by two, and then the whole thing uh, minus one. Okay, then I close bracket. Okay, so again, uh, you write this out. So this is equal to sixty four point four 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 times ten to the power minus three. So it's one eighty. Square root bracket 180 power of 3 divided by 200 power of 9 divided by 6.9 power of minus 6. Square root the answer times by 4.2 divided by 2 cos, okay, then 1 divided by the cost value. So it's equal to with 180 power of 3 
divided by 200 power 9, divided by 6.9 power minus 6. Where would the value first? Okay, then cos that value. And then 1 divided by the answer. So it's equal to, uh, I'm having some. Did I copy the formula properly? Hold on, 180 power 3 divided by 200 power 9 divided by 6.9 power minus 6. Ah, uh, my bad. I think square, I'm missing a bracket. Square answer. root. Yeah, I see that. Square root. The answer. Times by 4.2 divided by 2. Cos of the answer. And 1 divided by. So it's 1.3775. This one has to be really careful. I'm going to call it 1.378 and the whole thing minus 1. Okay. So the deflection is 1.378 minus 1 times the 64.444 power minus 3 is equal to 24.359 or 24.36. Times 10 to the power minus 3 meters or 24.36 millimeter. Okay. So it's about 2.5 centimeter over a length of 6 meters. That is the maximum deflection you'll get. So you can see it's quite straightforward. The calculation for buckling is, 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 is not that bad. Uh, as I said, a lot of times, uh, as I, uh, a lot of times, again, I make a mistake before make sure this is in radians when you your calculator have to be on the uh radian mode okay now i'm going to do another example okay i'm going to do another example and now this example we are going to use the chart okay we're going to use the chart so let, let's look at our example number two so far anyone any question I know there's a lot of layers, okay? There's a lot of, like, if you look at this example, I, I explain in detail, right? What are the formulas you're going to use? How to determine the second moment of area? What are the things to look for? Okay, and then how to, or you have to do your, your, your process in steps, okay? Calculate your critical load, PZ. Those in square brackets will be provided. Okay, then how to determine, I, I think this step is also very important. Okay, determine the value E is also critical. And then after that, once you're done, it's just a matter of plugging in the formulas and make sure that uh, your, 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 your mode of calculation in terms of second pi over 2 is all in radians. Okay, you just have to be careful over there. Right. Then we are going to look at our uh, example number two. Oh, I got a question. Yes. Uh, can you go back to page three? Yes. Uh, the reason the reason why m is equal to pz times e uh, is because uh, the force applied on this structure is uh, are coming from upward and uh, z no. axis is eccentric loading so it's not exactly applied at the centroid so the load is not applied at the centroid down here right yeah. it's not it's eccentric but why pz pz because i label this axis as z this is y and this is x. So, okay, maybe I did not write properly. It's p, small z, and this is big E. Lee, does that make sense? So the so load just, down, the load down so, here is p z. So you just you just assume there's a p z, right? No, it's not assumed. It's definitely there. You cheeky sort. 
<laughs> there's 130 and 50 down here. Okay. Right there. You can see this? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I will quickly talk about uh, example number two before we go for a five minutes break. Okay. I'll copy. Okay, so for this problem over here, we are given that the axial load P is equal to 175 times 10 to the power 3. Are uh, applied parallel to the geometry axis of W250 44.8. Okay, so W250 44.8, this is the material or these are the properties or the geometries that we are going to focus on. Okay. Column AB, an intersect at a distance E is equal to 12 millimeters. So we know that this is our E from its, geomet uh, from its geometric uh, axis. Knowing that stress yield is equal to 250 megapascal, and the Young's modulus is equal to 200 gigapascal. Determine the factor, determine the factor of safety with respect to the yield. Okay. So this is one of the problem. Okay. And this question very specifically say that we have to use figure 10.23. So you are asking me, Eugene, what's figure 10.23? So if I were to go back here, so I want you to focus on this. The yield stress is 250, the Young's modulus is 200 times 10 to, power, uh, uh, 10 to power 9 Pascal. So 250, right? So if I go back to this chart, you look at this over here. U is 250, Young's modulus is 200 times 10 to power 9 Pascal. So when we come back for the break, a five minutes break, we're going to use this chart to do our calculation. Okay, go for your break, a uh, five minutes break. We come back at what? 8.12, okay? I'll see you all later. <laughs> 